As we continue in worship this morning, and we have this opportunity to, to gather as God's people and uh, quiet our hearts and go to our Heavenly Father in prayer today. I just want to, um, to let you know we do have some, some sad news. Um, Beryl, uh, Beryl Went uh, is in our choir. Her husband, Rich Went, had a heart attack this week and went home to be with the Lord on, on Thursday. So we want to keep Beryl and her family in, in your prayers. I know there are uh, a lot of prayers that we have in our hearts, on our hearts and in our minds. And we want to uh, lift them all up to the Lord. There's a list of, of people in our bulletin, the prayer list. There are many, many folks uh, who have, have health issues or, or just um, not able to, to get around as well as they used to. We want to continue to lift them up. Um, especially also want to lift up uh, Debbie Peterson this week. She's healing. She had um, some back uh, surgery or a procedure done on her back earlier this week. So we want to continue to lift uh, Debbie up in, your, in, your, in our prayers as well. Uh, so many people who are on our prayer list, uh, maybe in, in nursing homes or, or shut in at home, we want to continue to lift them up. If you know, the, if you know these folks, um, it'd be great uh, for you to give them a call uh, to just reach out to them. I make uh, phone calls during the week, and if you know somebody that needs a special touch or a visit, please call the church office uh, so uh, I can go visit them myself or pass them at to visit them if they're at home or in a, in a nursing home or re rehabilitation facility. So let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer now. Let's bow our heads as, uh, as we reach out to a loving God, a merciful God, the God who created the heavens and the earth, and we know we know, Lord, that you are the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, that you are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace. And we just, we just want to bask in your glory this morning. Just fill this sanctuary with your presence. Let your Holy Spirit be felt here and now. Comfort each one of us in the ways that we need to feel your comfort. Reach out to those who need a healing touch. Comfort those. Comfort those who are lonely. Comfort those who may be depressed or feel, or feel all alone. Bring your peace to those who need, who need to feel that peace. Father God, we just, we just come to you right now, Lord, and confess the times that we've fallen short. We have a, a sinful nature, a desire to, to please ourselves, Lord. And that is something that, uh, that we're born with, Lord. Ever since the fall in the Garden of Eden, um, you have been reaching out to, you, to, our, to us, to your people. So let us just visualize your hands right now reaching down, reaching out to us. And help us to extend our hands to touch yours and to receive the mercy and the grace and that unconditional love that you have for each and every one of us who call upon the, upon the name of your Son, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. This morning, Lord, we stand in the gap for those who are listed in our prayer, our prayer list in our bulletin, Lord. Many, many more who may not be listed there, but they're on our hearts and our minds. So let's take a few moments right now in silent meditation and, and lift them up to you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. And, and we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you've put in our lives, Lord. We thank you for milestones. We thank you for, for birthdays. We thank you for accomplishments. We thank you for being there for us. We thank you for, for graduations, for those of us who have uh, finished our courses of study and are moving on now, Lord. We thank you uh, for that, and we ask you to continue to guide us, continue to to make us aware of your presence each and every day and help Help us to follow the path that which you've laid out for us. We know, Lord, that you, you created each and every one of us on purpose and for a purpose. So we, we just pray, Lord, that we can step in, into that plan that you have for our lives. 
and that we can focus on your goodness and your grace and your mercy and extend that to others. So we're just so thankful that you clothe us in your righteousness. And we're, we know we're not worthy, Lord, but we thank you for that. And we are ever so grateful. So please, Lord, we want to continue to lift up our church and our community in our prayers. We thank you, Lord, for, for those who serve our community, for our first responders, for our policemen and firemen and paramedics. And we just, we just ask you, Lord, to, to guide them and keep them safe. Especially, Lord, as the school year is coming to an end, we thank you and we, we want to lift up in prayer all our school teachers, administrators, uh, the bus drivers, uh, the custodians, all those who, uh, who work in, in the school system, Lord, and all those that may be homeschooled. We thank you for the, for the, for the literature, for, for the resources that, that are made available, that we can, can teach our children, that we can raise them up in the word of God, and we can, we can give them the skills that they need so that they can uh, grow to be mature adults and to contribute to society and to give back what you've given to them. So we just come to you right now, Lord. We pour our hearts out to you, and we thank you for being a loving, merciful God that has unconditional love that you pour out on each and every one of us. And we pray this all in the name of your Son, Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray this prayer when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Well, good morning once again. And uh, so good to be here this morning to bring a message to you. We're continuing the series called the I Am Series. These are some of the statements that Jesus, Jesus made about who he is, how he declared, I am. And this morning we're going to look at a text when Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. And this text is very important for us as Christians. So the question is, why is it so important? And I'm going to answer that question, but not right now. But I was just thinking, um, how many of you remember that TV show, Let's Make a Deal? Right? They had three doors. There was always these choices, and, and uh, contestants would come, and uh, they would dress up in crazy costumes in hopes that they would get selected to be one of the contestants in, in that uh, game show. And if they picked the right door, they could get a great prize. But sometimes the prize was not so great. And the host would allow them to trade maybe for another door. You know, and if you stop to think about it, really, life isn't life full of those choices? We, we all have doors that we walk through in life. We, there's many, many doors, many choices that we have. And sometimes we, walk, we may walk through a do door and realize that, that was the wrong door. But we have that opportunity. But we, there's a reason that we walk through doors. We have a purpose. We have an expectation when we walk through a door. You know, I walked around the church uh, this week preparing for this message. You know, there are 14 doors, 14 exterior doors to the church. I'm sure the trustees know about those doors, right? I have no idea how many interior doors there are. There are many, many doors because the church is, through the years has grown and buildings have been added. So there, there are abundance of doors. But when you walk through one of these doors this morning, did you have an expectation of meeting God? Did you think about that, that I'm going through this door um, to meet with God? I want to be in God's presence this morning. You had a purpose for coming here this morning and walking through that door. You know, some of us have uh, doors to our homes that have deadbolt locks and security systems, right? We, feel, we want to feel safe and secure behind our doors. So many of you know that I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and we always locked our doors. Not just at night, the door always got locked. But I remember hearing my parents and some other adults talking about the good old days, right? When you didn't have to lock your doors. Um, you could leave your door unlocked all night long. You didn't need to lock your doors. But we have, it's a sense of security that we have, you know? When we leave, even when we leave our homes now, 
uh, we lock our doors and turn on, turn on an alarm, you know, just to go to the grocery store. When we, we go out uh, to go to work or if we go out to run an errand, we want to lock the doors. But, you know, doors somehow, you know, they make us feel safe. Having that do just having that door there allows us to feel safe and secure. It protects us against the outside world. It protects us, but also it makes us feel safe and secure inside. And there's just something about that, that nature, that's something that we, we like to feel safe and secure. We want to feel that peace, and we know that we're safe and secure. But just Im imagine what it would be like if you didn't have any doors on your, on your house, if everything was just wide open. How safe would you feel? You wouldn't f have that peace or that feeling of safety. But you know, there's, a, there's another door, another door that, in our life that protects us from thieves and robbers and for those that would try to harm us. And unlike uh, the game show, Let's Make a Deal, where we have to guess and hope that we choose the right door. When it comes to our faith, there is a door that we can walk through. We don't have to wonder which way to go or what we have to do. It's, it's a spiritual door. It's a door that Jesus said that he was, that he was the door. And he can watch over us. He'll watch over us wherever, wherever we go. And this, this door that we're talking about today is that door that Jesus said that he is. I am the door. It's a spiritual door. It's not a door that can protect us and, and keep us safe from the world around us. Those things are going to happen. But it's that, that faith that we can have that will get us through those those struggles and get us through those problems that we may have. Jesus can guard us and keep us safe spiritually. In this walk of faith that we have, Jesus is our security system. So let's take a look this morning in, in the book of John, chapter 10, uh, when Jesus was uh, talking to the people, to his disciples, and to those around him. Uh, this, is, this comes to a in the scripture in the book of John where Jesus says that he is the shepherd to his flock. And he, he gives this story, this illustration. And, but then he has to repeat himself. He has to clear, clarify it. In, in verse 6, Jesus says he uses figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. So he repeated himself. In verse 7 it says, So Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, you know, that Jesus is talking. He's saying, really, believe me, really, listen, truly, truly, I'm telling you this. I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me, who came before me, are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We are blessed when we hear God's word. Thanks be to God. So Jesus here clearly says that he is the door. In some translations of the Bible, he says, I am the gate. See, Jesus is the only opening, the only way to the things of God. So why is that so important? I asked that question before. It's important because you and I both know that there are many beliefs out there. There are many religions that say there are other ways to God, that there are many ways to get to God, to come into a relationship with God. See, there's a certain exclusiveness here when Jesus said, I am the door. He didn't say, I am a door, not one of many doors. He said, I am the, the door. What Jesus is saying that he is the way, the door by which the sheep or the people enter. He plainly says that he is the only open door to God. Even though there are many different beliefs and religions that claim that they have the truth. But it's not the truth. If it's not centered 
on Jesus Christ, on the message of Jesus as the Lord and Savior, they are not the truth. So what does it mean for us, for you and me? What does it mean that Jesus is the door for us? Well, when Jesus compares himself to the door of the sheep, what he's saying is through him that we can receive spiritual nourishment. We can receive rest and peace and joy and hope and forgiveness of sins. In the church, we call that salvation. We receive forgiveness of sins. We can't save ourselves. Jesus is the way. Now, the sheep pen... You see a picture up here of one of the sheep pens and the, sh the shepherds would take their flocks out during the day. There wasn't, the, the land around there wasn't very good for farming. It was very rocky. But they would graze the sheep during the day. It was a stone enclosure with one opening. Sometimes they had sticks and thorny leaves, thorny bushes over the tops to save, to help protect the sheep from, from wolves or other predators. And a shepherd would lead his sheep into that sheep pen at the end of the day for the night time. When there was only one shepherd in the sheep pen, the shepherd would lead them in there and then he would guard the door. He would actually lie down in the opening, literally making himself the door to the sheep pen. He would protect them. He would keep them safe in that pen through the night. And he would also keep out the thieves and the robbers, the predators, the wolves, the, the, the animals that would be there to harm the sheep. Sheep were very, very helpless. They just wandered around. They really didn't have very much sense. Some people say, you know, sheep were very dumb animals. They would actually follow each other off a cliff if they, they just keep their head down and they would just keep going. You see, Jesus is the only door. He is the doorway to truth, to safety, and abundant life. And when we walk through that door, he will be there to help us, to help us through those struggles, to help us through those difficult times. He can protect us from those thieves or robbers who try to steal our, our faith or try to, to get into our soul with lies. In this context, Jesus is vividly e expressing himself or comparing himself to the religious leaders of that time who were misleading the people, who were very intent on, on oppressing them with laws, with rules and regulations. They did not share God's love with them. He was calling them, in this text, he was calling them the thieves and the robbers. No, in the book of John, chapter 14, Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus doesn't just speak the truth. Jesus is the truth. Before we enter that door, before we come into that relationship with God through Jesus, we may not really understand what the truth is. But after we enter that door, we can have an intimate relationship. We can intimately know what the truth is. And that way we're more able to, to uh, differentiate between the voice of Satan, the voice of evil, that voice that uh, wants to rob us and steal the joy that we have from God. Like many people have dead bolts and security systems in their home and get a peace, get, have peace of mind when they go to sleep at night. Jesus can give us that security. Jesus can give us that peace of mind, that hope, and that peace that we need. And he will keep you safe. He will never lead you astray. He will never harm you. And he will never let the enemy destroy you, no matter what we've been through. Even as our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a lion, roaring, looking for someone to devour, he can never destroy us. Because Jesus conquered evil. Jesus conquered death. We can be at peace. Just picture that God has you in the palm of his hands. God is reaching out to each and every one of us. All we need to do is to extend our hand and touch his and be in the palm of his hands. I read a story about uh, a mission church in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. And there was a, there's a small metal door 
uh, on the side of the church. And that little door is changing lives. On the door is painted, Door of Hope. And that's exactly what that door is for many, many babies who were abandoned. Babies were abandoned on the streets uh, to die through exposure and starvation in South Africa. So this mission put this door in the side of the church. It was actually a bin for, for babies, for, for mothers who could not take care of their babies to actually uh, deposit the children in that door, the door of hope. And that's exactly what it was. They can anonymously take their unwanted babies and someone would love them and care for them. Now that mission is saving over 100 babies a year. That's an incredible door, a door of hope, a door of life, of abundant life. You know, Jesus said that I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus says to each and every one of us, listen for my voice, listen for my leading. I will show you life the way it was meant to be. Jesus can show us life the way it was meant to be. To the weak and the timid, to those of us that are fearful, to the guilty, to those who are worn out and tired, he calls us, he says, come, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. He says to all of us, all of us who are sinners, he says, my grace is sufficient. To those who have been abandoned, he says that you are wanted and you are safe with me. I will never leave you or forsake you. Maybe, you know, people have been confused. So we sometimes get confused. We lose our way. He tells us to come, to come to him. If you've wandered and perhaps knocked on doors with, of empty promises, he says, come to me. Come to me and I will give you abundant life. Now the word life here doesn't just mean, merely mean existence or mere existence. This word life means a life with God, an abundant life. And Jesus is to us that door. He opens that door to us, to the kind of life that God has already planned for each and every one of us. It's ours already. God has planned that for us. It's open for us. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven because heaven can be here, right here, right now. We can get a taste of heaven right here and right now. And Jesus is that door to an abundant life, a life that God has for each and every one of us. Now we all have a choice. God gives us free will. We have a choice. We can choose to go in or we can choose to stay out. Jesus is calling us to enter. So we can choose to enter that door. We can choose to hear the truth. We can choose to believe and understand that truth or not. We can choose to pass through that door of hope and of safety or not. We can choose to enter that door of abundant life or not. God has all of these things for us if, there's always an if, right? If we will just approach that door and walk through that door and step through it. So my question is, have you opened that door? Have you stepped through that door? And spiritually seeking, you can have, you can feel safe and secure and hopeful and you can have a, an abundant life. Because Jesus said, I am the door and all who enter through me will find peace. The peace that only I can give and the joy of true acceptance and comfort and the assurance of forgiveness of sins for each and every one of us. This morning as we celebrate Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, I invite you to come with expectation 
come to meet Jesus at the communion rail. He's there extending his hand to you. I want to picture that. And I want to challenge you throughout this week that every door that you walk through, every door that you approach, remember that Jesus said that I am the door. I am the door to abundant life. And give God all the thanks and the praise and the glory. Amen? Amen. 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 In the sermon notes this morning, have the scripture and a few life application questions. Before we receive communion this morning, um, as you're sitting there, I would invite you to say this prayer together and uh, use this during the week as well. So let's pray this prayer together, shall we? Gracious Lord, thank you for being the door that protects us from the threats of thieves and robbers who try to steal people away with a different message who selfishly work for their own gain, robbing the sheep of the truth. Thank you for showing us that you are the door that gives us access to God and abundant life. I pray for those who are still looking for the right door and for those who have found it but are standing in front of it unsure. Help them to see clearly. May every door we see remind us of your words of promise and the grace that they offer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. In the Methodist Church, we have an open table for communion. You don't need to be a member of this church or any church, but just truly desire in your heart to repent of your sins and have a relationship with God. In other words, approach that door, open that door, and step through. Christ invites us to his table, all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we're yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God, God our God. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit On the night in which Jesus gave his life up for us, he took bread and broke it and said, this is my body given for you. As often as you eat, do this in remembrance of me. And then likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. He lift, lifted the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink, do this in remembrance of me.
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice to make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please come as the ushers lead you. my body which was given for you as often as you eat do this in remembrance of me now take the cup and drink the cup of the new covenant the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of sins may God bless you and keep you may you arise and go in peace know that you have truly been forgiven and you have been in the presence of almighty God amen and amen please rise Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen and amen.